Welcome. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to stimulate curtains. We begin by drawing a rectangle for the curtain. We group it and uh, assign it a cloth state. We then draw, create a pin at one of the corners, and uh, basically create multiple pins across the upper edge of the uh, of the curtain. We do this equally. We draw one edge. Divide it into multiple segments. Uh, yeah, and then copy the spin across the segments of the edge. Here, I press times five. Now we erase the edge, and uh, draw a strip for 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 moving the curtain sideways. And to do this, we have to draw a strip this size and group it, and also position it at the center, and the particular distance sideways. There, and uh, of course, the strip should also be a cloth, and it should have multiple pins at each corner. Now, what we have to do is assign a grid to to the cloth. Oh yeah, first we have to estimate the spacing. Seems like four okay, three point nine let's okay, let's go with four. Four centimeters as a spacing. Simple grid. Let's let's go with smart grid. Four centimeters and there press OK. There now this grid has this grid. I mean this cloth and this cloth has this grid. I think this one, because there is only two, perhaps we could undo the grid over here, purge edges, and apply a new grid with even a smaller spacing. There. Now if you press play, oh, we first have to enable self-collision for the cloth. Um, enabling self-collision is not necessary here. But what is necessary is that the shear stiffness is high and also the bending stiffness is high. This one can be as is. Now we can try simulating and see how it goes. What we want to do first is uh, select all these pins. We can also select cloth, it doesn't matter. Or if you don't want it, we can deselect it. And, uh, Basically, drag it sideways, slowly. You can also use keyboard keys, the left, right arrow keys for dragging along the x-axis. Now our objective here is to uh, is to move like a third of the way across the cloth, and then what we do next is we select these pins and converge them a little bit there S this looks fine and then we converge these pins along the green axis of course to converge them you hold the control key and then either with the arrow keys or with the cursor with the interactive cursor you drag the green axis and to do it with the arrow keys you hold the control key and use the up and down arrow keys for the green axis for converging in the green axis. So you want to converge it a little more. And now, with this part done, we can continue dragging along the red axis, uh, very slowly of course, because if we do it really fast, we will mess up the uh, cloth. It is always good to stop, to stop simulation for, to to indicate the checkpoint and then proceed to the next step. This way if we if we mess up, say say I drag a little fast, there I mess it up. Yeah I mess it up and uh, I can reset to the original checkpoint and try it again. So here we want to drag this really slowly. I'll use arrow keys the left arrow, the right arrow key. 
and basically drag it until we reach the other side and maybe even further a little further there we should do this really slowly because we don't want the cloth to start penetrating itself and perhaps seeing that it looks like the cloth is trying to escape over here perhaps we may want to lift this a little upward there and as a final thing we want to converge those until they loop until they like form a loop here view this from the side way I mean this is enough but yeah okay like this and if necessary we can move this a little further there All right, here this looks a little too too linear. Um, to fix this, we can try to decreasing the stiffness a little bit. There, it starts to hang down a little bit, and maybe perhaps increasing the bending stiffness. only helps over here but not much over here well I think this one looks good so we can reduce the bending to whatever it was and uh, press stop if the cloth formed we can uh, then proceed to applying loop subdivision so we select both of these and uh, access cloth menu and click on the apply loop subdivision option there the cloth is a lot smoother of course you don't want to run simulation after you apply smoothing because this will have the cloth behave a lot differently and of course to unround the corners we want to up follow with placing smoothing two iterations We can of course uh, hide the pins. To hide the pins we can uh, turn off the pins layer here. And uh, for the final step, apply I mean yeah, apply texture. So we select both of this, click on this icon over here. This will reset the the layout of the cloth. And uh, here we would want to apply a desired texture say let's say let's say we use this texture yeah that's too large can I reduce it uh, let's make it thin and for this one and of course the texture must be applied directly to the face otherwise when we renew the cloth state or the cloth layout, the textures will not be preserved. So the rule to keep in mind is that the texture must be applied directly to the faces. I choose something different for this one, probably this texture. And uh, we can select both of these again and click on the drape icon. If in case the texture is not desired we can of course repeat the process again by clicking on the tray packing and uh, applying a new texture say you may want to change this texture to yeah, this type of grid and uh, come to tray packing there This sums up the tutorial for simulating cloth. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.